<laughs> Jesus Christ. Spencer. You know, got in into discussions with Vouch and Destiny, kind of from that world. Vouch. Uh, Hitler is a villain in history books, in yeah. American history books. Was he one of the villains that you liked? I'm a big Mel Gibson fan. We have one thing in common. <laughs> It is taken out of context. It's it's a worse side <laughs> of me. And done. What's the difference between a wig nut and a griper? Um, there were so many ways that we could have dog whistled this effectively. I don't even dog whistle, but it just been a little bit more subtle. But okay, fuck it, right out the gate. All right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we usually do start to. I understand the f bombs, please. Please don't, I don't need to spend this a million fucking times. I've heard about this a million fucking times, okay? Thank you. I was gonna say, Richard doesn't usually miss them. I was like, oh. Callers aren't until the end of this thing, right? <clears throat> okay, all right, well, good. Well, okay, so uh, I did talk to him. I thought it started at 10. Uh, and to be fair to him, we usually do start at 10. The last one, matter of fact. Oh, was, yeah, okay. My sh yeah, a lot of times when I bring on guests, they come on at 10. So that's pretty normal. He said, um, hey, sorry, I thought we are starting at 30. One sec. So uh, shouldn't be too long. Maybe we'll bring Dalton in as a caller later. He said he wanted to talk to Richard, really. Uh, so if we have time for a caller segment. Uh, I don't really see much limits on, on what we're doing here. Let me switch tabs. Uh, to I this. had an echo earlier. Do I, do I still have No, I don't, I don't hear it anymore. I think I'm, I think I'm good. No, you sound fine. And for those who don't know, we're not even going to do, I don't really see a point. Well, maybe we'll stu still do intros just to like introduce each, you know, the two people, right? To each other. Um, but it's not, a debate. it's not a debate. Well, I mean, that's just, you know, you have to have some type of structure. But uh, other than that, I don't really think, you know, I'll just be referee or whatever and um, kind of just a discussion on, on wherever it goes. I don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen. Really, that's me something. neither. I don't. I don't know either. I just wanna. Uh, I just wanna get to know him, I guess, and like, um, try to um, try to understand him in a way. So that I, 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 I guess like, I want people to understand each other. So I, if he and I can understand each other, uh, that would be a step in the right direction. I think. Now I want to say this: when we switch tabs here, it's gonna say versus. Because I don't have a special set for. I it. understand. It's I a, am it's... gonna get. I, I am gonna get that set though, because we've had discussions like this before that where a person was like, ah, you know what? I don't really want it to be verses or whatever. And then we've had verses that end up actually just being discussions too. Um, right. But I want to be clear: this is not really a debate or a versus type situation. Uh, it's just a discussion. But uh, I had to do that because of the setup with the cameras and all that. So uh, there he is, right on time. Uh, Mr. Spencer, how you doing, is sir? Is there a better way to do this? I'm gonna this. Well. Hey, how are you? I apologize. Uh, it's I, all good. No, it's completely. Uh, Don't even worry about it, because we usually bring people on at ten anyway. When you said that, I was like, yeah, you know what? That's completely. Well, that's usually what you do. So really, this is entirely your fault. Yeah, right. I'll just take the word. <laughs> uh, okay, now. <laughs> Now let me see if I can get you guys pinned on the screen here. So yeah, I'm trying to do that too. Yeah. Okay. So I got you Are there splitters on this the... game? Okay. I'll get it. I'll get it. Uh, I'll need you on the right. So yeah, that's oh, the. So okay. Stupid. Now say something, uh, Max. Yo. Hello. 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 Okay. No. 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 I got it. I got it. I got it. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh no. Wait. Did I pin? I actually pinned the wrong one. Okay. This is like, I'm going to have to figure this out better. All right, now say something. Yo, hello, hello. Test, <laughs> test, test. There you, go. there you go. All right, now I got you pinned. Now, Richard, you say something. Richard, your camera, I don't know if it's on or not, but. I just turned it on, actually, and I'm seeing it on my screen. There you go. I got you. Uh, go. Uh, no need to waste some more time. I'll let you. Uh, since you've been here, Max, and Richard just got here, he's getting his bearings a little bit, still probably getting everything figured out. I'll let you start off. Again, not a debate. It's just a discussion. But I still figured we'd have uh, a little minimal intro or whatever. Introduce, you know, introduce yourselves or whatever. Uh, sure, sure. Uh, I'm, I'm Mr. <coughs> Girl. I'm a, I'm a YouTuber. I'm a rapper. I'm a Twitch streamer. And... Uh, Guess my content's mostly about trying to bridge political divides and and uh, get people to empathize with and understand each other. 
And so I'm obviously uh, very interested in talking to Mr. Spencer here um, mm -hmm. about that, as, as people have a lot of trouble empathizing with him and accuse him of, of being unempathetic himself. So I think uh, I, I'm just, it's interesting to me. Good. Yeah, it's, I, it's my pleasure to talk with you, Mr. Girl. Um, I am huge on TikTok, uh, Twitch, and uh, Snapchat and um, all those platforms, I, I am just well known and beloved. Uh, just kidding. Yes, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so no, I, I'm Richard Spencer, I am uh, who I am. I guess we can see if I um, fit the DSM-5 category of a uh, uh, sociopath um, after this conversation is done. <laughs> um, fact check. The DSM-5 doesn't have a sociopath or a psychopath anymore. They actually deprecated all these, and it's all under the umbrella term of antisocial personality disorder. I know that because my ex-lover that I was in a long-term fulfilling relationship with was a psychology student. I do have a lot of empathy, though. Oh, I see what you're saying. Um... Yeah, well, I wanted to ask you, like, how how personal uh, of a conversation do you want to have? Or I, I've noticed that I watched a bunch of your interviews and um, people kind of attack you uh, out of the blue. Like they'll try to get you to let your guard down and then throw something in about your personal life and then bring it back right. to politics. And then they're, they're constantly just trying to, like, jerk you around. And I find it very uh, ugly. And I, yeah. I don't want to I don't want to do that. So, um you know what I mean? Uh, I'm trying to watch my camera angle with yours. One second. Yeah, we can get personal. Um, I I would just say, okay. you know, there there are there are certainly some things that I don't want to talk about or, or something like that. But okay, um, if, if so you're just, acting in if you're acting in good faith, then I'm not going to have. Problem. I'm going to try to ask everything in good faith. Uh, I have had issues with people thinking I'm not in good faith when I am. So <laughs> if I say something or bring something up that you just don't want to talk about, um, I but like just tell me. Like I don't, I don't want to do the thing where. Sure. If you say I don't. This want setting the tone is actually really effective. Um, he comes out of the gate saying like I'm going to try to be empathetic towards you, and then he's like he's trying very. I don't know if he. I don't, I don't know if he listens to anything that I say or if he's just figured this out on his own. But this idea here of like out the gate and like, hey, how personal do you want to go? Okay. Well, hey, if you feel like I'm being too personal, just let me know. If you feel like I'm trying to got you, just let me know. I want blah, blah, blah. You can see that like these are learning from the mistakes of like Lauren Southern where he gets very personal, doesn't give her way out. Or Vosh where he tried to talk to him, but Vosh like clearly wasn't ready to go into like hard questions related to like age of consent or child, you know, porn or whatever, right? Um, this is a, he's doing a really good job at setting a proper expectation at the beginning here and coming across even if he's not going to be good faith at coming across as good faith this is a really good job here i want to answer that then i'm like smirking and i'm like oh well of course he doesn't want to, like i don't want to do that shit <laughs> right right no i understand no i mean i don't yeah i don't really have anything to hide and you know there's there's something you know there's there's some things that are just kind of nasty and personal or you know so on that have been made public to some degree or there are rumors about it or insinuations yeah. or vague accusations and you know i'd rather not just like delve into those things okay but, um uh, so if yeah. i if i do just let me know sure um your david packman interview mm. did you remember that i i definitely remember doing it i remember a few moments from that uh yeah I remember he, was a few like moments a, from that. he was a dick uh, I don't remember it that way. Actually, I don't think it was the worst. Maybe you're used to it. I am. I am used to it. I mean, I, I think when I make a little bit of a breakthrough as a liberal, I think I count it as a win. Oh, okay, I see. You're. He was less of a dick than you thought he was going to be. So it, it's your your bar is very low. A bit. I don't. I don't remember him being the biggest dick, to be honest. But maybe okay. you know what is it? As time goes on, the past becomes <coughs> more golden and the future becomes more gray or whatever oh, coronavirus is taking over guys <laughs> i love watchman it's my favorite book 
Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, not my favorite. It's definitely up there, though. I think it's a great graphic novel, and I thought Zack Snyder's movie wasn't faithful in some ways, but I think no. it's very, very cool. In other it was ways. cool, so but I, I it was not. It did not capture the magic. Uh huh. Yeah. There are a couple of things I could go into with it. I think he kind of gentile Watchmen in a way. It's kind of more interesting when those characters are Jewish. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Spencer. There were so many ways that we could have dog whistled this effectively. I'm not even dog whistled, but just been a little bit more subtle. But okay, fuck it, right out the gate. All right. Uh, it's Zack Snyder. So. Well, I mean, uh, I I think it's it adds another layer that was intended by the author, and Zack Snyder, in his way, took that layer away. But you know, I still think I I actually like Zack Snyder a lot. I like his films. I like half of his films. Mm. Some of them are pretty bad, I think. They all look yeah. great, though. Yeah, and they're kind of bombastic and 80s montage. Um, yeah. I thought Man of Steel was a really good movie, although I didn't like it when I first saw it. Mm -hmm. But I appreciated it later for what he was trying to do, full-on Jesusification of of Superman and um, I liked the Snyder cut which I saw recently and I think some yeah. of his movies are maybe almost like I saw his zombie film on Netflix and it was you know I don't know kind of kind of bubblegum you know like I don't I don't really remember anything about it it was just Zack Snyder you know amazing shots and bombastic action but yeah. you know no there there really but uh, yeah, I think I he's an interesting way but you you were born the same year as Richard Donner's Superman. That is true. Is it that, 1978? Is that when that it, movie? Came? I, I think so. Yeah. I, I think so. Yeah. Uh, is that you, that has to be? You 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 do like that better than Man of Steel, right? No, no. I think I would prefer Man of Steel. Wow. But I do okay. I do like Donner's film. It's well, a, it's a good that's movie. the most upsetting view I've ever heard you espouse. <laughs> um, and hopefully this interview will be good then, if that's the most upset I make you. <laughs> well, no, it, it won't. It's going to be ugly, but that I, you just are underestimating how upsetting that is. Um, <laughs> I Do you know anything about me? I know a little bit about you. I've watched some videos of, y of yours from YouTube. Okay. And, um, yeah, I, I would say that one of them that I watched was quite negative, but, um, <laughs> and I've seen you, you know, gotten into discussions with Vouch and Destiny, kind of from that world. Vouch. Yeah. Um, Why do people call him Vouch? Every are they trying to troll him or are they? As they are, you know, it, it, it doesn't matter in a way where you're coming from. It's what, how you're speaking to me right in this uh, moment. Can okay, I have a yeah, conversation that's... with you? So All it's right, cool. not a big deal. <laughs> Thanks. Um, okay, so so in in kind of broad strokes, my understanding is why did I come here? I didn't need to. That come your here. stance I just that. Fuck. is that anti-white sentiment is on the rise. It is actually this this was your stance. I don't know if I don't know if um, you still are aligned with this, but I'm, I'm going to try to, in broad strokes, uh, say my understanding. Sure. Ant Anti-white sentiment is on the rise. It's basically okay to hate white people in, uh, in progressive or liberal like culture. Um, it's okay to discriminate against white people in certain situations. And you're disturbed by this. You want an ethno state at some point down the line, um, as do many other races, in your view. In, in Israel, right. for white people. Okay. I mean, do you, do you want me to go? Because I, I feel like I don't disagree profoundly with anything what you, you just said. I, I think that I, I would have 
some more nuanced takes yeah, of course. On, on all of those things. I, but, yeah, I know. And, and I think there's also a tendency, I mean, it's less so now. Now the spotlight's not on me and I'm able to ex- dilate on things and be kind of self-critical and maybe question presumptions that I had. But, you know, when people got to know me in 2016 and 2017, it was exactly as you say, you know, okay. it was like white people were rising up. We, we've had enough. We're not going to take it anymore. We and are not going Trump is our it. existentialist president, basically. Right. You know, that, that's what you said is fair. I, I would I would bring a lot of nuance to all of those things that you just said, though. OK, OK. Because uh, in many ways, we hate ourselves more than anyone else hates us. But OK, go on. White people. Yes, I, I think the white guilt complex is, is profound and we can't really understand these questions without addressing that. But uh, yeah, that disturbs me. And I um, I really I don't like. OK, so I, I'm very anti identitarian. I would say that that is probably the, the biggest break that I have with you. Mm-hmm. Um, OK, I'm from Amherst. Mm hmm. And more um, like and I feel like you probably know I'm sorry, that uh, was what bad. that means. I'm done. I'm sorry. Oh, yes. I visited Amherst uh, mm. back in my high school days. I, and, I, uh, I can't think of a, a town that would hate you more than Amherst. <laughs> right. Like, I don't I feel like right. there's, but there's then in a th- weird way. Is there a town like I, I'm at home in those places as well? You know? Yeah, because they're very identitarian, too. Well, they're identitarian, but I'm not talking about ideology, like just in the kinds of places where I would like to live um, oh, and college, where uh, I would, New where I would college, appreciate, yeah. yeah, where I would appreciate the little cafe and appreciate the used bookstore and appreciate yeah. the kind I used of to work at historical the preservation. Yeah, I think that's one of the places where I would actually feel at home in a weird way. But I take it's a, it's a very American place. If if yeah. if American places can be more or less American, so yeah, yeah I was raised um, to believe that diversity is good, racial identification is bad, and then quickly except when black people do it, then it's okay, and when right. Jews do it, an ethno state is okay. So my reaction to that was to say, well, I don't think any of it's okay. So I I I'm anti-identitarian across the board. Um, That's I don't want to be consistent. Yeah, I don't want to be part of a group. I don't want to be in the club. I don't want to be in the club with other Jews or or in, uh, fucking anybody. I don't. I don't. I don't even. I don't want to be a Democrat. Um, I feel I'm I'm anti like faction basically. Aren't you going to get bulldozed with that attitude though? Because at the end of the day, we live in a society and we live on a planet. We live in a. Oh hey, shit, hey, hey. he's making the arguments, but he's prepared, okay? Mr. Girl's prepared for these, right? The world of groups and groups dominate. And so even if you and I and I actually take you at your word, I think you sincerely believe that. But is that really a good choice? You know? No. And are Not you really. kind of are you is that a oh, kind no. of luxury he's just gonna bite all the bullets. Have Yes. as an American in the 21st century. Uh, not not just as an American, my... but uh, but as me, yeah. specifically. Yeah. I think that I'm able to intermingle very successfully with different groups of people. Um, probably I can read people very well and communicate with people very well. And I don't get along with everybody, but I... Um, I don't really need the sort of like buffer that being part of a group gives you. Mm-hmm. And I also am willing to like you um absorb large large amounts of vitriol from any uh, uh limit more people than there are on earth. So I'm 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 fine with that. So I'd say those two things um those make me privileged in a way. Mm-hmm. Where I don't I don't I don't need a group. And I'm, and so I understand why other people would want one or might need one, um, but also uh, we're all going to get bulldozed. So I I view it as what what do you want to be doing? 
What do you want to smear on the pavement after the the bulldozer goes over you? What shape would you like it to be? And and to bring us back to Watchmen, uh, you know, when you get exploded in the snow, what do you? What a what happy smiling face? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm and so in, like I'm more interested in being the person who's driving the bulldozer over you. Yes, that's kind of absolutely. Yeah. I see you have a very dog eat dog world. Uh, um. View. It's about winning. I mean, whatever you want to say about Trump, and I've totally rejected Trump, but um, you like the I, I think they're though. well. Yeah, I mean, it, it's that's what life is about. It's about it's, winning. It's about winning, and it's in you know you work within a group to the extent that that group is going to gain more power <laughs> and have dominate other groups. And if you're not in this to win it if you're not in this to ultimately dominate the entire planet then what are we doing really talking sure, about politics dominated. because politics isn't consensual it's not art politics is about the domination of the physical world and in some ways the mental and spiritual world as well but i yeah, hate to put it in such brutal terms but it that's i don't know if you do uh, i feel like you sort of do <laughs> like putting it in brutal terms i don't think i don't quite believe you there Fair. um because it's provocative. I think you enjoy the the provocation of putting it in brutal terms. Sure. Um, yeah, yeah. I see. What I, I there is an annoying um, duality to America's view of itself in the world, where we're going to build an empire and um, rule the world basically with an iron fist, but also then say that we love everybody equally and everybody deserves human rights and, and uh, blah, blah, blah. But yes. if you, if you fuck with us, we'll just, um, you know, drop un unthinkably horrible uh, bombs on your country. Yes. And, and additionally, um, I think the individualism and true diversity, which you seem to believe in, and I, I actually think you are genuine, is it's not so much an ideal as it is a management strategy in the sense that this is the tact that America has used to manage an empire and ultimately dominate the planet, which it does and has done for my lifetime and mm -hmm. will do, I think, for for probably maybe my whole lifetime. I don't, I don't think it's all coming down tomorrow morning, but who knows? But it's a you have to understand it as a kind of management strategy and not as an actual ideal. Um, Wait, and but I guess what if it in, but what if it isn't? What for me it is an ideal though. Right, but you're just kind of deluded by what other people tell you. <laughs> Are, and you're not. Uh, I, I mean, aren't we? Sure, are we all? We're, all, we're all influenced. That was a bit harsh oh, statement, but, but you're taking their rhetoric seriously, and I don't take their rhetoric seriously. I take it as gospel. Um, right. That's an uh, interesting choice of words. I'm a, I'm a fanatic. It's a religion. I, I, I concede this. Right. There, there, are, there are, well, but I think you might be too. But I think there but are. At the same time, I, I kind of disobey it. Like, I, I see it for what it is, but I want something more. So in that sense, I too am an idealist. I just feel like there's the, the kind of cost, civilizational cost, that has occurred due to this, due to America's history and its founding, it, it, its fa its founding impulses, which I think were uniquely bad, um, and you can Jeez. see those in the founding documents, um, which I totally reject. What um, equality? From the philosophically equality speaking, yeah, um, Declaration of Independence, quite bad, um, but also just the kind of <laughs> clockwork mechanism of the state. It's it's. It's, it doesn't describe any state in existence. And this kind of, you know, cutesy Hobbesian notion. Well, it's a it's dream. Actual... It's, a, it's called the American dream for a reason. Right. Yeah. Never it connected can't, can't... to reality. Well, it's, a, we it's, could a, it's, it's something so to strive for. Things. Yes. Is it, though? Like, well, we, is it yeah. actually that great? The other aspect of the American, um, you know, situation was so problematic was just the large population of religious fanatics, Calvinists in particular, who okay. made up the population. And I, and I think that led to a certain type of American type. I think they're kind of like two American types, one which I like and the other which I despise. 
there is the American type of the frontier that had to go out into space and kind of go reduce civilization in a way, like move from a European society of trains and, and hop into a canoe and in a way become a savage as a way of progressively moving outward in this con this continent there, there is something about the west and so on that i do have a romantic fascination with and that i love um i do think that there is a pe peculiar type of american puritanical school marm or just moralist and anti-intellectual moralist that is kind of descended from the john winthrop types and, and a deeply egalitarian moralist so there, there is a new hierarchy based on your puritanism or your your morality that I just despise. And I think that was the the real founding of America came on a ship uh, with John Winthrop. Even before he set foot on America, he had already imagined it. And well, wait, that, you, you can I ask a question about you despising it? Yeah, sure. OK, uh, you definitely despise hypocrisy. I sense that. Yes. You also despise un unrealistic idealism? Not necessarily. I kind of, I have a certain fascination with real idealists who are trying to advance civilization. No, I, I despise the Puritan attitude that has really inflected American thinking in ways that I don't think we fully understand. I think someone like Elizabeth Warren is a deeply American type and probably mm. genetically related to Calvinist who Jesus. we America there it was this like you know in some ways like if you could survive the West the frontier if, there was a there was a selection process going on and I think in in many ways it selected for a good type a kind of hardened badass who was very cooperative was an individualist of sorts but was very cooperative um, I also think there was a kind of selection that took place in America with the original founding Puritans and they do believe in the gospel and they they are egalitarian there's a new kind of they're a priestly type as well and yes i absolutely despise those people i don't think they add anything to civilization because uh you're saying moral they're moralizing to the point where they're choosing being good over winning well yeah but they're just boring i mean they have won in some way <laughs> they've been successful well, what do you, so what do you what do you put me in all this? I don't quite know. I think you are a genuine liberal. I think you you're an you have a lot of open mindedness, and you're high in kind of agreeable traits. And I think you genuinely are intellectually curious. That's just my take. Yes. On having talked with you, and I would say that you have your haters online, and I kind of have a different impression of you talking with you. So that's that's my assessment of you. I think I think. I, I think you are genuine. I don't, I don't think you're, um, you're pursuing an agenda. I think you have a genuine op open-minded attitude. Well, I, try, I think agenda implies that the person is not saying what they're trying to do. Right. So like I, if I tell you at the outset, like you're an identitarian and I, my channel's trying to dismantle identitarianism, um, I feel like that I hope buys me I'm some. I'm cool with it because you're open about what you're doing. <laughs> right, exactly. Like if I'm trying to trick you into contradicting yourself and then say, well, but uh, in 2011, didn't you say then, then um, I feel like that becomes an agenda. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, also, the other thing I don't like about when people do that is that it implies that you have to cheat to win. And like I... Mm. I, I, I believe, and part of the reason, so people are like, uh, some people are critical of me t for talking to you. Yeah, sure. And I assume some people are critical of you for talking to me. Yes. And, and I want to believe that if we all talk to each other, um, the, the better ideas will prevail, which I believe are mine. Uh, and, and you may believe the same thing. So I don't, uh, and, and, and if we talk to each other, I honestly. believe that to a degree, but I, I agree with your basic sense that it's good to talk. Like 
one of the things about me is that I, I really am willing, like I would love to go have conversations with some liberal YouTubers or, yeah. you know, bread tube. I actually think that I can add to the conversation whenever I've mentioned by, and I, cause I'll, I'll sometimes watch them. Uh, whenever I get mentioned, it's like a quick, you know, kibosh, you know, yeah. like they'll, they, they'll sometimes even say something like, Oh, it's kind of weird. He voted for Biden or like he's, he's actually, he doesn't actually believe. One thing that a lot of you guys don't realize if you haven't seen this is there is a huge divide amongst so many of these like alt writer types. Like there a lot of people hate Richard Spencer. A lot of people hate Nick Fuentes a lot. Like the extreme left has a lot of infighting online. The extreme right has a ton of infighting as well. So many of these groups fucking hate each other. It's like pretty crazy. Leave that he's a little bit different. And then they'll be like, no, no, he's a shit, shit bag. You know, he's a turd. Don't talk, you know. Gav is in the middle of like, a right wing civil war. Yeah, that wouldn't surprise me at all. <laughs> Do you think there's a way to make it so that once my power is at 100%, I stop shipping in new energy? Because I realize now that I am wasting material to ship in energy. I'm using space warpers. I don't know how I feel about that. Immediate, um, you know, uh, 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 what, what's the right word? Just like, um, you know, control, what is it? Control A, delete. You know, it's just yeah, like, yeah, yeah. we're not well, contemplating any of this stuff. It's very funny. Okay, uh, you, you have said and done what's the difference between a wig nut and a griper um i don't think gripers are like avowedly white nationalist or white supremacist they definitely i think they hardcore flirt with it but they're more like they call themselves paleo conservatives they more want like a huge they want like a hardcore return to a traditional america which generally is going to imply a lot of restrictions on immigration and a lot of kind of like white nationalist or white supremacist kind of stuff um I think wignat is like a slang way to refer to like a white nationalist who acts like, I think it's like their version of Uyghur. I, I haven't used that one in a long time. Um, and I think that the wignat people are a bit more like, like I think like a groiper would say in, in general, also keep in mind, all these are very like, people will fight over the definition of this, right? A groiper will say something like, we need to go back to what America was like. We need to curb immigration and make it how it used to be. And a wig net will be like, we need to get all the fucking brown and black people out of here because they're inferior to white people and they're destroying the country. It's like slightly different, but there's like, there's probably tons of like overlap between the groups. And then I'm sure people are going to fight over how you define what or what. So, yeah. A few things <clears throat> that I think make people think that, um, you're a Nazi, basically. That and that you're pretending. You know, when they say like he went full mask off about yeah. whoever. So there, are, so there's that audio recording, and then right. the hail Trump, blah blah blah. Um, oh, really? Legit. And I think that no, nobody trusts anybody. So I, I don't think this is that unique to you. I think all of us have moments or things we said or did that people take to be maybe because they want to believe it that's the that's the real you yes and then anything else you say is seen as subterfuge and there's no way to um escape i that. agree and that that the audio recording from that was released i think in 2019 or some something yeah. like that i mean that that was used precisely to to undermine destroy you. me yeah yes. it was it was promoted by um <laughs> Uh, Milo, it was it was yeah. secretly recorded apparently by some Catholic uh, person who's now running for office. You know uh, what is? I think Spencer hates a lot of the organized religions. I think right, like when he says Catholic, that's like disdain. Prize, um, and it was yeah. It, it also, was... Gripers might tend to be Catholic. I think Cause isn't Fuentes Catholic? Am I wrong on that? It was released I think, shortly Catholic? after okay. I went on CNN and it attacked Trump, and then shortly after um i was critical of the gripers so i mean i i think there was a, a kind of agenda there for sure and um and the other thing is that like first off very few people ask questions about like why were you recording this person in a moment of extreme stress you know yeah. like I, that was a moment you know i was at a point of just it, total exasperation and i indulged in power fantasies you know mm -hmm. and you know that I didn't say that publicly. I didn't say that to anyone and I wouldn't say that to anyone. I, I was just out of my mind, you know, 
and because I, I felt that Charlottesville had been such a disaster. And so it, you know, it was the worst aspect to me. But also notice it was secretly recorded, which is yeah, not, yeah, yeah, yeah. not illegal, but highly unethical. And then the other thing is, where's the rest of that recording? You know, like that, you know, you, you find a 15 seconds or 30 seconds. I don't know how long it is. Um, where is the also what event are they secret- talking about? I think there was a recording and audio of Richard Spencer that leaked where I think he said like a bunch of like avowedly like racist anti-Semitic shit, I think. Um, I, I don't remember. I don't doubt we could listen to it on stream, but it's been a while. It's been a long time since I've listened to any of this shit. Recording where I say something that is honest or something. None of that's there. It's, it's sure. pure destruction. And, okay. Do, so yeah. do, do, are you okay with me pushing you on the recording a little? Or what? Yeah. Sure. Uh, I, are you tired of talking about this? Oh, well, and I, 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 I know you're tired. I'm sorry. That's a disingenuous <laughs> question. Obviously, you're tired of talking about it. I want are to you talk so, about it. No. Are you so tired no. of talking about it that we can't? You can talk about it. Sure. Okay. Uh, okay. So you got to, from, from the point of view of, a, so let's say, a bread tuber, the response is going to be, <laughs> well, on my worst day, I'm even when I'm losing my mind, I don't scream that like we're, I'm going to dominate like, you know, whatever slur. So, yeah. Um, is that evidence that you, uh, harbor like deeply held racial hatred? Well, I mean, you, I think you, you have to put it into context. I mean, one <laughs> thing that was very true about the 2016 and 2017 alt-right is that it was a big tent movement where b- effectively anything goes. And How, You know what? I was about to ask a question. Then I was going to broaden it and say, actually, it affects my... And then I realized, actually, it kind of affects me. Um, the question I was going to say is, how garbage must you feel when you were part of the alt-right in like 2016 and onward for a little bit with the Charlottesville stuff, you had your like, it was your time in the sun. You were there. It was mainstream. Everybody was talking about you. You were the alt-right. Your figureheads were like getting international coverage. Like you were there. It was a big thing, right? You had mainstream YouTube stars voicing your fucking beliefs. John Tron out here spitting fucking alt-right talking points. It was like, oh my God. And then it just kind of fizzled out and nothing happened. And then I'm thinking, I guess the same thing kind of happened. It hasn't completely died yet, but I guess it happened with the lefty movement in the U.S. under Bernie, where it felt like, here it is, it's time. Kyle Kalinske, the Young Turks, Hassan Piker, Bernie Sanders, uh, the Justice Dems, like the big, the lefty movement, the socialist coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. And then it's like, where, where did it go? But then I remembered... Um, I guess I kind of fell into the same thing here back in 2008, where I don't know if it was ever big. Maybe it was just online. Um, but the uh, the big libertarian movement, because everybody was like, Ron Paul, we finally have it, a libertarian president. Something like it deluded ourselves. Think like, is it this? It's going to be the next state. It's like, um, yeah, we're going to end the Fed. We know all the solution, all the of life's problems and shit. Um, yeah, so I guess we've all been part of these, like, the rise and fall of these big online movements and shit. And there, there was a, you don't see this type of uh, camaraderie or esprit or something anymore. Mm-hmm. Now it's very, now the movement is very fragmented and kind of inner looking and, and, and infighting and so on. But at that point, it was a kind of like, we love Richard Spencer, we love Andrew Anglin, we love Donald Trump, we love some random frog Twitter guy who's dropping the N word. We love Ricky Vaughn. We, it, it was everyone was on the team and because we felt like we were winning and we felt like it was a, just a big tent mass movement. And I think that to be critical of me, I think I kind of indulged in stuff that I now find really cringe. cringe yeah. You know, I okay. definitely find hail Trump cringe now, although I didn't, I don't say it now. I said it in the moment when we were all exuberant. Sure. And I, you know, and, and I, I think I was probably also kind of playing to that crowd in the sense of I was just being like the biggest badass. Like, a, you know, I, I have been I was not a great athlete by any stretch, but I did play on the football team 
And I can remember totally insane halftime speeches from coaches and other players about, you know, eating the other team and, sure. you know, okay, raping like, them or whatever. So Jesus. it was there was a little bit of that in there, too. Yeah. And so, it, look, it, it, it was a terrible moment. If you want to say that that there are some problematic aspects. I don't want to say anything. I just, okay, I just want to I just I want. Well, I'm like, giving you the context. I don't want the context. I want okay. To- I'm curious. So we've hit the exact same issue that he hit with Lauren Southern. He is trying to have a personal conversation with Spencer about how Spencer feels, feels, feels personal feelings about what he said. And if there's any regret or if anything is wrong, if we did anything different. Right. And what Spencer is doing is technically the same thing Lauren Southern did. He's like, well, hold on. Like, um, let, let's. What about the context? I think the context about like this is why people said that, and this is what we wrote, right? And now he's without even getting into how he feels personally. The thing he's trying to surround all. He's trying to build up all the context for why it happened. He's doing. He's like in the justification mode, um, rather than like any kind of like personal conversation mode. You know. I want, like, okay. If I so the thing people hate me the most for so far, is saying that the girls and cuties were hot in my review. I saw that. Yes. Okay. So you can imagine if you said, um, you know, you know, I like talking. You seem like a cool guy, but like, why the fuck did you say that? And I'm like, listen, you, you, (laughs) let me take you back to, it was, it was 2019. The exuberance was in the air. We were all very excited. Like I can tell you about some halftime speeds. You'd be like, okay, well, like, yeah, but what about the part where you said the girls and cuties were hot? I feel like, like I, I get what you're saying that like we all say things we don't mean in in a, in a moment of excitement. But is that is that your answer that you didn't mean it, or no, that you sort no, that no. you sort of mean it, or my, that other everybody holds those beliefs uh, no, to some degree? I and, think my answer is that that there 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 probably is a kind of reptilian brain. Richard Spencer, who said something like that. Okay. There, it, that 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 person, I said it, and I will own it. There, there is that person inside me, but okay. that's not the only thing. What I am, and that really is something that I am aware of, and that's not something that I find at all, you know, productive or anything. I, I have, you know, it, it was a very bad moment, but I, I will own it. I'm not gonna. I'm not going to try to evade any responsibility for it, but you know, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think that that's almost the best I can do in a way because it's not me. It is taken out of context. It's, it's a worse <laughs> side of me, but I think you can, you can in a way see. So you called, you said every black person at the stadium was a dirty N word. What do you mean when you say that was out of context? Well, okay. Now listen. All right. I just come off a 10 loss streak on league. All right. I was my promos to diamond four and I ended that day plat three. So let me set the stage for you. Okay. So you can understand, you know, it's like, uh, okay. Well, I don't know about this one, chief. Um, not that he, that's not exactly what he said, by the way, I'm not trying to miss it, but like I began this conversation talking about, you know, groups dominate and bulldoze others. You can yeah. almost see that. It's like the green, like, it's like the green goblin. <laughs> Exactly. Or you can see that rant is kind of like a horrifying and in a way kind of juvenile or scatological version okay. of something are, that I would express in a higher. I, I understand <laughs> sure. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I get what you're saying. Are, are but, you horrified? Like, I actually am more nuanced and I am a reasonable guy. I mean, I like I piss off a lot of people, yeah. but I also pride myself in like talking with people. Yeah. And they genuinely like. When we're when I'm one on one with someone, um, not Ethan's audience who are totally no, they me beyond measure, but and they're they're sending super chats. So there's there's that mediation, you know, in the sense of like you will say something to someone on Twitter or on 4chan that you'd never say to their face, you know, in a million years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and so it's mediated. And so I think when I can cut through mediation with people, I really can talk to them. And, I, uh, I, and I'm in a way proud of that. You're very good at uh, pissing people off. Uh, another thing I've noticed in your interviews. Yeah. Um, I feel like you'll, uh, you'll kind of stress test the person 
to be like, if you're gonna, if you're gonna uh, attack me, just do it now. And uh, people will usually, uh, you're pretty good at it. Like if the person is gonna snap, um, you're you're pretty good at determining when and how that's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. um, okay, uh, I'm ready to move on from the uh, the outburst. Um, unless you have anything else you want to say about it. I don't have anything else to say about it. Okay. I'm a big Mel Gibson fan. We have one thing in common. <laughs> you got that one thing in common. De deranged outburst. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, you know, people are people are like, well, they're like, but you're they're like you're a Jew, like Mel Gibson hates you. And I'm like, well, if only when he's really drunk. <laughs> but that's that's okay. Uh uh Okay, so I didn't know this. So I, I've been arguing against uh, people saying it's okay to punch Nazis mm -hmm. on Reddit. I've been arguing with people about this for years. Oh, this came from Richard Spencer, mm. from him getting hit with but a I didn't know something. that they were specifically talking, talking about, about you. You didn't Until, know that? No, I didn't know that. Okay. Until like a like a week ago. I've wow. I've known who you, I've known who you were for uh, since I think since I was in college in like two. I think it was just a fist, was it? I thought the guy had a bike lock and he hit him in the face. Am I wrong? Maybe it was somebody else that got hit. Oh, the bike lock guy was different. Spencer got punched. Okay, gotcha, never mind. Six, probably the first uh -huh. time I heard of you. Um, oh, interesting. Okay, that was very early. Yeah. Interesting. Um. Uh, yeah. So I don't. I don't think it's okay to punch Nazis. I don't think you should punch anybody unless um, you're defending yourself. When and and of course people will say like, well, I am defending myself, but like that's not that's not what I mean. Yeah. Um. Do you have you? I'm glad I have at least one defender on Reddit. <laughs> yes, I I will. Uh, I will die to defend your right to for free speech. I don't I, I Again, like if you believe that good ideas will rise to the top and that's part of your justification for free speech, then when you punch somebody for talking, you're kind of implying that their ideas are better than yours. Yeah. Um so you shouldn't do that. And and it's immoral to uh punch people. On top, of, so strategically, morally, uh, but pretty much across the board, I, th I think it's pretty uh, abhorrent. Yeah, fair enough. Um, what do you think about political violence? I, I assume when it's directed at you, you're certainly against it. But in general, um, I've heard you. I've heard you denounce it. So, what well, I mean. You know, I, I think before you engage in, in moralizing, I, I think you have to kind of analyze the situation and see what's happening. I, I do think that we have. I do think. What did he say? A world in which political violence is going to be more prominent. And that mm -hmm. just is what it is. Like, I'm not going to more, you know, putting I'm neither an endorsement or a condemnation. It just simply is what it is. I mean, okay, so I can this is remember. The bulldozer well, thinking. no, let me. No, because it's it's a little bit deeper than that. Because it, it, there are there are times when political violence is unthinkable, in the sense that I mean I can remember being because I'm older than you are. I can remember being in college, in like the turn of the century, and there was a general feeling that political violence was just over in a way. Like what you're what are you going to do? Go protest what? What you the know, fuck was we, that noise? We have it all. Like, go buy a dot com stock and make money. Like, there there wasn't a real cause. Yeah. And there's certainly, you know, Antifa might have existed at that point, but it, it was, you know, 10 oh, guys Mr. Girl shit does this or something. And um, something like J6 or what? Unthinkable. And yeah. so now, and I and I think <laughs> the 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 punch of Richard Spencer and the whole punch a Nazi debate and whatever and all those memes that were made. I think that that was indicative and it was in a way a kind of small aspect of something that is now growing and that is very real. But this even this kind of ebbs and flows. I don't think we're going to see another BLM summer. 
and we can talk about reasons for that. But you know, th these things that can ebb and flow. But I do think it it does spell a kind of certain instability in America, maybe mental instability. Who was well. that one? The elusive girl. I'm gonna be totally honest. I shouldn't be totally honest. That was the last bit of honesty. Okay. Every time I see a girl on one of these panels, I always assume they're gonna be like a hard lefty. <laughs> like every time they're gonna be a hard lefty. So when I saw that the Eurodite, the, the one girl, Katie or whatever, basically fit with exactly what I thought. The Eurodite girl sounded really base though, but I've never seen her in any of the politics circles before. Um, she seemed really cool. That Fabian guy, oh man, that dude, uh, he talks a lot and I'm not always certain who he's talking to. <laughs> Jesus Christ kind of disintegration is that the ashes it's very individualistic from, are, are those is that the fire and then the ashes from which the richard spencer ethno state could uh phoenix could rise like i don't like the, using them phoenix oh you're not saying you just I would say oh, okay, that, cool. like well, you, the ethno yep. state the ethno state is a inherently post-american formulation and i do think that a lot yes, of people misunderstood and, and, me because no, no. of this because they're like you want to throw out the blacks and throw out the mexicans and i would say like no this is about like reimagining rome and it's coming after a geopolitical cataclysm and i've always been like very explicit about need, that but i don't think people get that because they believe need, in america yeah 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 i believe in america okay so you need violence to have the geopolitical cataclysm you need no. violence in the street. Wait, let me let me let me walk through this, and you tell me. You could say no. Okay, I disagree end. with that first presumption, but yeah, go on. I think Mo political most... violence is a symptom and not a cause. I would strongly stress that. Uh, I think seeing, it, I think seeing... it could I think it could be both. It could be like the broken windows thing. The more the more people who get punched in the face, the more times people storm the Capitol the more people start to not believe in American democracy, fair elections, blah, blah, blah. I think all these things are symptoms for sure, but they can also contribute to just a sense of unrest. And True, but Wait, where's Pisco? Pisco, do you think Roe v. Wade was a bad ruling? I'm pretty sure he already said yes. Oh, did he? Oh boy. Okay, never mind. That's all you had to say. <laughs> okay, the answer is yes. Oh man. Fuck, I wish I had a link to this. I, it was a legal blog or something I read a while ago. And it was, it, I should read more on the back and forth on it. But after reading, I was like, wow. I don't know, man. Um, I don't know, man. Bookmark every article you read. I am now because I have this Zotero thing. So now when I bring up stuff I've read about like Russia or Ukraine, like now I can search through and I can show you like what I've read for why I think the things I do or whatever. Explain, Domi. Basically, the idea was that like Roe v. Wade, like out of, th out of thin air, abortion rights basically materialized because of an interpretation of like, um, pri like it was like a right to privacy, I think. Was it? It's been a while. But it was like, I just, I remember that I was, I was doing two things at once. So I wasn't 100 percent focused, okay? But it, the, the, the way that it read was that, like, we had used some sort of legal alchemy to create out of thin air from our right to privacy the idea that we should be able to have abortions. And it was like, oh, that actually sounds like a dog shit argument. I don't know about that one. Um, and I guess that, like, in, in some legal communities, I, like, people don't, I don't think people debate this openly because everybody has to be for Roe v. Wade. And, I'm, and I am, by the way, I'm definitely for the right to have an abortion. But the way that Roe v. Wade made that right materialize was interesting. I'll say that much, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Better arguments are from other parts of the Constitution? Potentially, sure. Uh, but, okay. Ethno state's not going to be built by, like, a bunch of guys holding up shields and yeah 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 i i, I understand like, that's that's yeah. not the phoenix part that's the that's right. the turning america to ashes part that has to come first and in, in but some I form think all of it's symptomatic i, I think you know, when i look back at it i think the alt-right was actually symptomatic of this what i'm talking about when you but i'm i guess my question is you getting punched in the face is a sign of Destabilized. Fuck, do you know what would be actually the most interesting convo ever?
it would be interesting to talk to some older alt writers and hear them talk amongst themselves and see how they feel about like where they were or what they were involved in or how everything worked. Like Lauren Southern arguing with Richard Spencer about like, do you think our strategies were good? Well, what did you do? What did you do? That, I feel like that would be a really interesting conversation to listen to. I think it'd be really weird. I don't know who else you, not weird. I shouldn't say weird. That makes it sound negative. I think it would be very interesting. Um, let me use the rest of it. One second. of America. Yes. And that destabilization, whether it's through violence or not, is, uh, to quote the Joker, all part of the plan. And so <laughs> if you, so you might be willing to get punched in the face if that means that you are one step closer um, to... Yes and no. I mean, look, it, the the plan is like the force of history. Like, there's no, there's no secret plan that I have to create. Uh, yeah, you might not have to do anything at all. Like, it, it might no, no, just no, happen on its I, own. That's not what I said. But okay. I, I do, I do think that America is going down on its own, and I cannot either prevent that or cause it. Like, it's it's like me standing out, and there's this tidal wave coming, and. It, it, when you see the tidal wave, like with a tsunami, you can't outrun it. But do you? you know, it's but like, do you? It's so do you want to? But do you want to? Um, you have to. I think. I think you will underestimate your. Uh... Here's something also that I notice. Um, <clears throat> hold on, let me make sure there's nobody in philosophy here, so I don't cringe too hard. Okay, I feel like. I might have to change this point of my view rhetorically. Um, I feel like I have a very postmodern view of like the world and history. So <clears throat> I feel like when I view history or when I view events around the world, that things are connected sometimes in obvious ways. But I don't think that like every single thing is connected. I don't think that I can explain through all of history like through a particular lens and say like, oh, well, this is all about class struggle or, oh, this is all about, you know, this. I notice that when I debate people, they oftentimes subscribe to often like a single narrative that will describe like so much of history. Um, the Muslim guy did it where uh, he's like, oh, well, you, we can follow through like, you know, liberalism, li how liberalism dominates Islam. And we can see every single, every single ill in modern human society can be traced back to liberalism. Every single thing that will make us happy can go back to Islam. Or when Richard Spencer talks about like, how does diversity and the American dream work and everything, like he has a singular narrative. And I think sometimes it's hard for me to push back on those narratives because I, I have like, I view it all like, I'm sure that there are parts of the American dream that had to do with like people coming to the new frontier, but I'm sure that was also probably influenced by like the class they were born in. I'm sure it was also influenced by royalties willing to spend money on, you know, imperialistic ideas, which I'm sure was also influenced by like the different trade associations between different countries, which I'm sure was also influenced by like the advent of modern technology and our ability to sail across the oceans, which I'm sure like, I feel like there's like, we, we can use like certain tools to analyze certain parts of history, but to say there's like an overarching narrative that explains so much of modern history that if you just understand this idea, so much becomes clear. Unless you want to talk about zoning regulations, then I believe that explains everything. But like, yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like sometimes I have a more fractured view of how world the world works or there are so many more inter interconnected things than just having like one or two narratives that will necessarily say things. I think that hurts me from a debate point of view because um, grant narratives are so fun. To be able to put together like one narrative and then be able to tell the story of history through that singular lens is uh, is very compelling and very nice and very clean, very cool. Um, yeah, I don't know. Place in history. Uh, as well, as much you. as- Maybe I'll get all Nick Fuentes now and yeah, say as that God's uh, well, on my side and I'm a historical. <laughs> as, as much as part of me wants to call you a megalomaniacal, uh, egotistical maniac, I actually do think that you, um, have played and may continue to play a um, important role in American history. So I, I think if you really wanted to stop it, I don't. I don't think you could do it single-handedly. Just but just the same way, uh, no one person can start a riot. Right. You can throw a brick through a window and get get um, 
a good chunk of the way there. So I would like I would like it if you wanted to stop the tidal wave. I I I like I love America. Well, in my defense, um, I did see the Trump movement becoming extremely toxic and useless, and I did not foresee J six. I was actually kind of laughing about those stop the steal rallies, and I was like, ah, it's just you know they're just out there having fun or whatever. I did not see something like J6. Now, J6 was uh, quite buffoonish in many ways, and I don't think it could have ever succeeded, but it was a kind of attempt at revolution. And, and the mm -hmm. people really believed that, and they said so on their own live streams. Um, oh, but... also, FYI, um, my current standing is that I would say that January 6th holistically uh, was an attempt at insurrection. I think that, well... Assuming that the um, the convictions come from the Oathbreakers that were like literally plotting out how to get new arms into DC, how to hold up the election process long enough for Trump, like I would say that like at that point with those charges, absolutely an insurrection attempt. Um, was everybody there involved with it? Uh, no, but I think that for the event holistically, I would say absolutely. Is Fuentes going to jail? I don't know what they're after Fuentes for, but the um, the conviction attempts, or, or I'm sorry, that not the convictions, the charges. That those Oathbreaker guys, um, to be fair, I didn't read the charges. I just read an article going over them. Assuming the article didn't lie, like these guys were literally, they had plans. They had like bombs and shit, or they had like guns planted like all over DC that they were going to be bringing in to like hold up the Capitol to try to stall off the election so that Trump can maintain power. If that's not an insurrection, nothing is. Um, the, those charges are pretty insane. That's pretty ridiculous. Oath breakers or oath keepers, or they might be the oath keepers. I don't know what the fuck they are. One of those things. Say in my own defense that part of my like just totally dumping Trump and supporting Biden was basically yeah. like it was saying like, listen, guys, Biden's actually not that bad, and Trump really ain't good, and the toxicity of that cult is not leading anywhere good, even if I didn't foresee exactly <laughs> where exactly it was leading. And well, so in some ways, I do want to kind of hold back the tide if it's not, you know, serving a purpose, you know, if it's if it's just a big fracas and, and you're just going to engage in this, like the most buffoonish. Coup de Can you qualify it some by saying that it was a useless insurrection attempt, though, because there are so many cont contingencies I've heard of the government puts in place to keep things going. Um, no, I don't think that you can say that, like. Like if I walk up to you and I like and I shoot you in the face and I find out that you have like a bulletproof face, <laughs> let's say I shoot you in the chest and I find out you're wearing Kevlar, right? And then we go to court and the guy's like, okay, this guy that was attempted murder. And I'm like, hold on, I could have never killed you. You had Kevlar on. It's like, okay, well you didn't fucking know that. <laughs> Wait, what the fuck? You didn't know that shit, um, right? I I don't know if you could say like, well, was it an attempted insurrection? Well, I don't know. It's not like even if they succeeded, it would have worked. I don't know if that I don't know if that works, right? a ta attempt of all time then there's no point there's no point in risking anything for that there's no point in getting burned by that Wait, what, what kind of fuck? coup would you support <laughs> if you could if you could if you I could have a, any I kind of any coup against the government i just want to be clear here yeah we know yeah but i wasn't asking you I just want to be clear anyway go ahead yeah i know i was yeah. just telling you go ahead if you if you could have any kind of coup you want I don't think America, I think the, 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 the fantasy of like, we could pull off a coup and change the course of America. I think America's decline. Pisco, you're is never going to get so me on board big. with using the term terrorist. And I just think it's such take, a nebulous like, let's term. Let's imagine if Trump but I love you, buddy. pulled it off, you mm -hmm. know, and they, they like canceled the electors and they got new ones and he was in there for another four years. Or let's say he just made himself dictator. I don't think that would actually change much of anything. It would just be like a slightly different path towards the same end. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of a Hegelian, like logical, there's a logic to history and it leads somewhere type of guy. Yeah. yeah. So, but now would I have enthusiastically, you know, endorsed, like if I were living, cause I am Anglo-Saxon. So I, I've got some German roots and English roots. Like if I were living in Germany, <laughs> during napoleon's invasion would i just be an enthusiastic supporter of napoleon yes 
if I were living in Britain, would I have betrayed my own government to support the emperor? Hell yes. Okay. <laughs> so I'm not against any of these things. Like, I'm not going to moralize about like, you know, it's not a democratically elected government or something. You know? Right. You don't, uh, do you not believe in, you don't believe in democracy? No. Well, I be- I don't know what believing in democracy means. Well, yeah, you you do. He doesn't you, like you, necessarily you, value uh, it. it. I don't think a lot of these alt writer types do. That you. Um. Sounds like it seems like a god awful way of choosing leaders to me. Some kind of popularity. <laughs> yeah. I mean, do we want so to you, take? You know, if we you look don't believe at in democracy, that's what that's all. of the American public, you know, Marvel movies and, you know. Uh, uh, gummy bears or whatever like yeah it doesn't i don't not sure i want these people making decisions now as it is i don't think there's any country that's truly democratic yeah 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 i i i, I, I get I, a, you know we're not yeah, taking do you think, referendum every right day I, I understand you're you're do. saying yeah. you don't believe Just in real quick you don't have to take a referendum every fucking day on every single fucking decision for it to necessarily be a democracy there's tons of different types of democracy okay it's a really dumb way of saying things right in the sense that you don't think it's actually happening I don't the way believe it, it is twice. intended to. Right, yes. I, I, I don't get, believe I, in it. I, so funny seeing Jesse in the role of granddad, Nazi, debater, knowing all the talking points and stuff. It's just very irritating because nobody ever learned any of the talking points of these of any of the conservatives. It's so frustrating. Even amongst conservatives, there are like there are a lot of different breeds of conservatives these days. Nobody understands. Like I, I remember I would still see like progressives or lefties talking to Republicans, like, oh, you guys are upset. You guys just want big corporate America business to take over. Like, no, what the fuck? Like, those are neocons, bro. That's like the age of George W. Bush. Conservatives today hate big business. No conservative is gonna be out here simping for big business. They just hate big government marginally more. Back in the days of George W. Bush, um, their people loved big business. These were the job creators. Okay, these are the big boys in America that they love. But um, I think that the new populist um, trend has has, has split um, the ideological differences in different ways these days. I get. I don't it. believe it exists, and I, I know. believe it's an ideal. Yeah, I know. So I, I know. doubly. I was asking about the second part. Yeah, it's definitely not an ideal. I don't. I I think to be to be fair. I think most people there. I think there's a large number of people I'll say who don't. Shapiro is still big pro business. Ben Shapiro might be a more traditional. I say traditional, like neoconservative, like a Bush era conservative. Do you think that's fair to say? Where he is, I think he's a bit more hawkish on foreign policy. I think he's pretty anti-Trump, and I think he's pretty big, like fewer government restrictions, like. I don't know. I don't know his position, but it, for instance, it wouldn't surprise me if Ben Shapiro was really pro-immigration because it's like economically beneficial, as long as there aren't like criminals. It wouldn't surprise me if he said that. I might be wrong. Maybe I haven't heard him talk about it recently, but it wouldn't surprise me if like that was his opinion about um, about immigration. Um, because I, yeah, I think he, I think he is more the traditional like Bush era conservative type, like an establishment conservative, maybe. Yeah. Really exists in practice, but who mm-hmm. want to strive for it as an ideal. So I would say that I, that's that's probably where I am. I I under I agree that realistically. It's flawed. I could be wrong. Never on that, works by the way. quite I the way it's supposed to work, and often moment. doesn't uh, even come right. close. But as a as a guiding light, the argument against democracy are Marvel films and Krispy Kreme donuts. Clearly, the clearly the American public should not be given any I, uh, decision making. I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't even like, think I. I don't think I agree. I think. I think Marvel. Popular. But they're 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 not that bad though. They're okay. Okay. But they're OK. The, I was going to say something here because the, the, I can make an interesting point about this. Imagine if Imagine. you were a German who was born in, say, 1905. OK. And you lived a very long life. And you were born in an imperial Germany with a parliament and also a monarch. 
-hmm. you experience a cataclysmic world war. You then lived in a democratic republic that was kind of foisted upon the loser of that war. You then experienced a fascist dictatorship for a dozen years. Mm -hmm. You then experienced a few decades as you reach middle age, uh, a communist dictatorship that maybe kind of reminded you of the fascist one in some ways and part of a Russian empire, mm -hmm. uh, very new stuff. And then as you were reaching about, you know, you're, you're an octogenarian, you actually start to live in a new kind of American democratic unified mm -hmm. Germany. You would have experience i mean i don't know how many that is it's like five or six different types of regimes mm -hmm. and i think you would have in different types and different ways of legitimizing the regime and so on and i think you would probably develop a kind of mature cynicism about the, the people in power you would say well you know i heard that from the communists uh you know hitler said that too and i'm not going to take this new liberal too seriously you know you there's a kind of mature cynicism and you don't you you do you believe in Germany in some sense. I mean, obviously there's like a there's a the German language and there's a there's a common culture, lots of differences, of course, but a common culture, you know. But you don't the German state. You might have a certain cynicism towards. And um, I think with Americans, it's very different because we haven't experienced that kind of tumult. And so you're, Americans, you're saying, you're, Americans you're saying believe you, in America much yeah. more than I. I don't think they yeah. can imagine, you know, if, if that that hypothetical person who might very well have existed. I'm sure there's actually a, a ton of people who literally lived through. But you're saying the that German that's Empire. how you f you're, you're saying that you have that's the cynicism. my attitude. I'm like yes. that German. Whereas you I have the cynicism of a 119 year old German. <laughs> that's what you're saying. Yeah. 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 And um, the, the Americans kind of can't imagine anything else. So like whenever they want to criticize the government, they just want to go back to democracy or like what it means to be a real American. It's mm -hmm. a, a very similar thing of, of like people living in Ru under Russian communism. They would have jokes like we pretend to work and they pretend to pay us. And they would kind of like go through the motions of, you know, spouting off Marxist platitudes or whatever. I think Americans are very different in the sense that they genuinely believe in their country yes. and they kind of yes. can't, they don't have an imagination of something other than America. Okay, here's a question. But I say that as a criticism and not I, I know, I know, I know. I, I mean, know. remember the the same word for, you know, believing in something is I think another scary thing about people like this, um, Richard Spencer, is when you have this overarching narrative Given somebody, um, they either emailed me or messaged me on Discord. Um, it was a really interesting criticism that I think I'm going to think about a lot in my future conversations. Is usually when I have debates with somebody like this, I'm usually asking a lot of questions to try to be like, well, what do you think? How can I attack you? How can we agree? How can we disagree? Like, what do I think you're irrational on or inconsistent on? Right. And I usually do that by asking questions to try to figure out because I'm not trying to pin you to the wall with something you don't believe. I'm genuinely trying to figure out what like genuine contradictions of what you believe. And um, somebody emailed me, and I think their criticism was like, listen, if you're debating a very good faith interlocutor and you guys are engaged in conversation, like asking questions is probably the best way to get to the heart of uh, your disagreements. But, and they didn't phrase it this way exactly, but this is kind of how I see this now. When you're dealing with somebody that believes in these like overarching grand narratives, when you ask questions, you're not really getting closer to any sort of real like material disagreement. You're just giving them more and more time to just keep talking about their view of the world. And the more you let somebody build upon that, the more compelling their argument is going to seem because chances are if a person, especially if they're in the debate, in the debate world for a long time, they're going to be able to tie together like every single problem in society to their particular worldview. So you have to be a little bit more pointed. I say you, me. I have to be a little bit more pointed when I attack people or when I'm engaging them in conversation and not just ask questions expecting, okay, we're going to answer and then we can kind of like figure out where a disagreement is because they don't view it that way. Instead, it's more just like this is, an ex this is another opportunity for me to just go on and on and on and on and on and on and on about how um, about what I believe in um, 
And yeah, and you're gonna, and now everybody's gonna sit here and listen to it. I think honestly, a good analogy is direct examination and cr and cross examine trial. Sure, where you were in a trial, you ask a question, you get an answer. You ask, and the the uh, person on the stand isn't really allowed to like ramble or just like go on and on and on about shit. They have to. They're the judge makes them answer a particular question, and then you can kind of build from there. Yeah. Credulity. I mean, you could also say that they're um, gullible. Uh, yeah, democracy requires the belief in democracy. Right. Uh, I, I agree with that. I don't agree with everything else you said. Uh, my Here's my question. Um, what if you're too cynical? Like, so to, to me, and I think maybe most Americans, democracy is like the goal. And then if we slip into a dictatorship, or fascism or any any other really any other form of government we've fallen through the floor that's a failure right um what if you're for me wrong? for wait, me wait. the goal is a higher level of civilization and yeah whatever gets us to that is fine by me okay what if you're what if you're wrong and the what ends if justify the means absolutely what if people uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's another huge disagreement we have. What if people are better than you give them credit for? And They're not. <laughs> why not? I know that. I'm saying in, in a hypothetical. In a, in a hypothetical, weird dimension where you're wrong. Um, what if what if democracy is possible? Uh, I'm not sure what the question is here, but let me just get to the end of it. If democracy is possible and uh, all people of all different uh, colors and stripes uh, actually do manage to live together in a, in a collective, uh, you'd you'd look like an asshole, wouldn't you? I don't know what the question is. Do you think it's possible that you're wrong, I guess, is my question. Of course I think it's possible that I'm wrong, yeah. But so like, like, I, like, I, like, like you, I get you can say... I get you can say everybody else is cynical, but uh, or I, an idealist. Um, it just seems gullible. like uh, gullible. It yeah. seems, yeah, like heartbreakingly cynical and depressing. Yeah, sorry to burst your bubble. You That's haven't. Terrible. You have. You don't oh, know. You <laughs> haven't burst my bubble. Um, I'm sorry that you've bursted your own bubble. But I never believed in democracy throughout my entire life. Yeah. I mean, I remember in like middle school reading history books and like really liking Napoleon. And, you know, I mean, I, I don't know what to say. Like, I just, it was just natural. Like the people, the villains that were given to me, you know, in education, I, I loved. Okay. So you, I've what seen. What is that song by Pet Shop Boys? It's a sin. Do you know the lyrics to that song? There's no. a funny song about being a schoolboy but not learning your lessons. All, it will come to me. Are we going to have another karaoke uh, moment later? I saw some people in chat asking for it. I... Oh, we could definitely do that. Yeah. All right, we might have to finish off uh, with that. Uh, we're going to take some callers, too. I don't want to interrupt too much, uh, but I do know we'll take some callers at some point, too. So I threw out the link if people want to get ready for that. Um, I've seen people ask you the Hitler question a few times. Okay. Which may be another well-worn topic that you are tired of. But can we get through it quickly? Sure. Uh, Hitler is a villain in history books and yeah. American history books. Was he one of the villains that you liked? He, he was, I, I've never been a, a Hitler fanatic or, or anything like that. I've, I've never read Mein Kampf. I've, I I've respect never what he was able obsessed. to accomplish though. I've, I've read books on the third Reich. I've never really been fascinated by he it. He might not say that. I, I mean, I, I do think that, um, you know, there are certain commonalities between, you know, Napoleon, Mussolini, Hitler, and other types of kind of 
leaders like that who were kind of viewed as as aggressive and conquering and just badass or something. Um, I, I would say this. I, I think it's it is like bad optics or dangerous to, to I don't think we can ever have like a real down to earth you know discussion about hitler and the way that we can about bismarck or martin well Luther. then let's let if you if you i mean we can just skip it then yeah i mean it because it's so okay. toxic because yeah yeah he, okay here's, an, he's, here's another question he's the moral core he's the anti-moral core of liberalism and so yes in some ways you kind of can't talk about it's like saying you can you can like having well it just depends you, you on can, your goals if you're an historian maybe you can get away with it and also, if you are bashing him, you can get away with it. But yeah, I mean, I, well, I yeah, and in a, a conversation about Hitler, I would be bashing him, and so you would be in the opposite corner. So I understand it that probably wouldn't be a good look for me, and it's just not, you know, okay, it's it's not something that motivates me. It's it's not something that okay. I'm passionate about. To be here's honest. a here's a better question. Okay. Have you seen Have you seen apt pupil? You know, I haven't, but I I think that. That's been recommended to me. I think that you would love apt people. Uh-huh. Uh huh. On many, many levels. Uh, I saw you retweeted the uh, Overlook Hotel picture. <laughs> so yeah. I know, I know you've got some Stephen King in you. Yeah. Uh, it's Although based I'm on a Stephen. A more Kubrick K fan, but. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, yeah I, I had that idea also actually, yeah. but. Um, it's based on a Stephen King story, directed by Brian Singer. Oh, okay. Starring... Fellow pedophile, I guess. That's why. Oh, well, I think he. I think in his defense, <laughs> uh, I think that, <laughs> that kid was. A, that was, was a joke. But... That kid was fifteen. Oh man. So, uh, te technically not pedophilia. Well, okay. I don't think you can ever win a conversation in which you're making technical distinctions. <laughs> on that that subject but uh, until I, now I, I, I until i until i just did just now now you know that you can uh um starring um ian mckellen and brad renfro brad mm. renfro um and david schwimmer mm. and it's about this uh i think high school kid who is questioning American history as it is taught, and then he discovers a uh, a Nazi hiding in his town. Yeah, and then he basically blackmails him into like forces him in to have a relationship with him, where he like shows him his uniform and like just basically like uh, just got, gets to know him. Yeah. Um. And then like a bunch of crazy shit happens, but uh, I think you'd like it. I'll put it on my queue. <laughs> Anna is losing it in Dylan's chat. That's what I. I'll said make Dylan take it, bring her on. Watch something. No, but... no, uh, <laughs> no. I'll probably watch it. I, I, my queue right now. Yeah. Um, I've never seen Manhunter, and I, 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 I. Wait, Trainwreck is about to win big. Hold on. Hold on one second, guys. Don't waste my time with this. So I just put that on my queue, and then I want the, to see this movie. The movie? That, yeah, it's 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 a. Um, oh, I know what it is. Thomas Harris Harris <laughs> kind of book, yeah. And yeah. Uh, for some reason, I've got, I kind of want a thriller, you know, murder mystery. Type well, and, Brian Cox is no Anthony Hopkins, so just be aware true. of that going into it. True. Um, and then I, I actually want to see this film, The Green Knight. Um, yeah. A, a, a lot of people, uh, people in the kind of, you know, alt-right or dissident right or whatever, they're like, oh, it's, you know, they they have an Indian actor as a white man or what, and, and, you know, fair enough. But it actually, that that criticism bores me at this point. And, and also, it, it actually looks really <laughs> fascinating, like visually spectacular. So I, I definitely, I look forward to seeing that. Yeah, I haven't seen that, but I'm a big fan of... Uh... A24. Okay, one other movie question. American mm. hist American History X. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, I've seen that, yeah. And uh That's that's I, my that's my idealism. That's right. That's my idealism. You, I'm sure you hate it. I don't hate it. It's very um, idealistic. 
it, kind of an interesting film because they, they what is the name of the lead character played by Edward Norton? Uh, Massive Nazi dude. That's all I remember. Yeah. Right. Well, they they make him obviously. That's what I also remember from that movie. Just the curb almost, stomping, almost yeah. actually hurt your teeth is what I always think about when I think of that movie. That yeah. Time. So they they made him horrible, and he in fact. I'm never gonna finish this fucking talk. Are we still an hour into this? We got sidetracked so hard. Oh. <sighs> Don't finish it, it's cringe and it's boring. Oh. I said person to you say well it's the same way. Honestly God, I don't know. <laughs> I truly don't know. I'm just, I'm just memeing out at this point. You have to admit though, Dylan did pretty good. Uh no, this is the same conversation we've had with her like a million times so far. one or terribly disfigures the person um how many ray receivers do you guys set up to make at the same what time the it's kind of interesting because when he's giving speeches he actually sounds a lot like pat buchanan so i think there was a kind of underhanded method mm. of smearing associating yeah of, of a kind of associating like what was in the 90s like actually fairly reasonable what are you going to retract i'll retract everything if she can make it six months i'll say that i was i seduced her and i mind fucked her over and over again and i was a horrible human and that's all i did the entire time i'll do all of that if she can make it six months not talking about me nationalism with curb stomping and then there's this other layer of irony it doesn't his little brother like get um murdered by a black person or something at the end of the film Yes. So maybe he was right? I don't know. I'm not saying he was. I'm just saying... Oh, <laughs> no! How do you... Oh, no. There's everybody American History X, right? How do you miss... How can you miss the point of the film that badly? Reasonable national... I feel like that encapsulates his entire ideology. That was... What an interesting analysis. Um, ...with curb stomping. And then there's this other layer of irony. It doesn't his little brother, like, get... Um, murdered by a black person or something at the end of the film? Yes. So maybe he was right? I don't know. I'm not saying he was. I'm just saying that seems to be the message of the film. I, the well, message, I... <laughs> maybe the message is you've got you've to be a goody, goody liberal regardless of even, even I, you know... I, th I thought the message was that hate begets hate, and yeah, what this is like a this is like an eighth grade film where it's like, what's the lesson? Oh well, it seems like when we act bad, everybody's bad, and it messes everything up, teacher. That's right. And that um, that it uh, you may not be the one to pay the price for your mm. sins. Maybe that that also I could see that as a message. Yeah. <laughs> what? Okay. Um, you might not be the one to pay the price for your sins. That's interesting. Collective punishment in a way. Um, yeah, I don't think that's a great film. I, I have seen it. I have no real desire to rewatch it. Okay. Um, but what are my favorite films? Is that a good question? What are I think? Uh, what are the greatest films? Sure. Yeah. American cinema. Sure. Um, I think John Ford is an amazing filmmaker. I, I do think The Searchers might be the greatest American film. And it's a very tragic portrayal of the hero in an ironic portrayal of the hero and of, of race, actually. Um, that's, a, that's a John the, Wayne the, Western? I'm named after The yes. Searchers, by the way. My parents named me after the new character. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> they were John um, Ford uh, aficionados. Yeah. It's a great film, very tra I mean, the person you're named after is actually kind of a tragic figure who kind of gets expelled, almost kind of loses it. Anyway, I won't give it away. Man Who Shot Liberty Valance is just an amazing Hegelian film. The man who shot Liberty Valance is not the man who shot Liberty Valance. I just think John Ford's great. 
I love Hitchcock films. Um, I think he's an amazing filmmaker. I guess it is that American cinema, but yeah, why not? We'll take it. Um, I don't know. Films, films are nuanced and serious and disturbing and tragic vision of racial conflict than American History X. American History X is, is salacious. It's whatever. Um, the Searchers actually makes it into a tragedy, and I, I would. That's is there an anything left in this interview, or is this just and contemplating? I'll put it on my queue. <laughs> <laughs> Which means you won't watch. No, I actually will watch it. Good. You should watch just, just like just like you're actually going to watch it after pupil. Um, I probably will actually watch that. And I probably will watch the Searchers. Good. Uh, okay, a couple <sighs> other. I have another question. Yeah. Uh, so in my my kumbaya hand holding uh, racial, I have I have two questions. Okay, so the first one is, and on my mission, which I will continue on, and my my platform is growing. Mm-hmm. Uh, these people can't get enough of me, you know. The money's coming in. It's it, it all, all in the past three weeks. I've I'm now really? doing content creation full time. I yeah, three weeks ago. I was a pauper and now I'm here. So if on my mission, as I rise to power, I, 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 I don't like white grievance. Be, um, I want to address white grievance. I don't like ignoring white people. I think being racist against white people is just as bad. I, I, you know what? I even think it might be worse than being racist against any other race because it's the only racism where people pat themselves on the back while they're doing it. Wow. So I I hate racism. Fair enough. I hate I hate racism against anybody, and I want to. Who is this uh, great streamer? And I want people to empathize with and understand the the plight of all people, including white people. Um, I agree, and I actually think in a in a in a funny way, I have more empathy towards other races and their suffering than most all conservatives who in their typical way always want to deny these things very yes. similar to j6 how like oh j6 it, it never happened it was just a a, a friendly walk in the park and why yeah, are you i've seen your people? your tweets about covid too they're in covid as well yeah yeah but they want to deny everything. One thing they want to deny also, this is a very kind of like Jared Taylor or Dinesh D'Souza, like pseudo intellectual of like, oh, well, uh, you know, the, the Indians, they, it wasn't that bad. I mean, they, they did bad things to each other. And we were we brought, you know, liberalism. No, we didn't. Yeah. We actually conquered the continent. And there was a tremendous amount of bloodshed and arguably genocide and dispossession, unarguably, that occurred. It was horrible. They have a right to their suffering and, and they have a right to their hatred and you know i i you can't understand the african-americans experience without understanding slavery there's no question and so, like the tucker carlson types who want to just deny we're all individuals now because mlk or whatever i just find this just totally dishonest and contemptible okay. so i actually do understand these things and i actually can empathize with that type of suffering in a way that a mendacious white person can't right uh i don't want to do that to white people like i I think there's no denying that if white supremacy is if we're trying to get rid of white supremacy uh, you know Mm -hmm. me as a progressive or liberal or whatever i'm trying to get rid of racism that means white people end up in a worse position at the end than when they started. Now, it's possible we all maybe we maybe we will all end up in a better position. Maybe maybe technology will allow us to all prosper and and drones will do all of our work and everything will be AI and and, and it won't matter and we'll all we'll all be fine. Lots of food and space and whatever. That's possible. But right now, I see why white people feel like they are losing power and standing in society because to some extent they are and to ask them to 
to to and some of them are going along with it and signing it away because of, of lofty ideals that you find contemptible and some of them are um pissed about it um, but can't articulate it but can't articulate it which is where you yeah. come in i understand uh but so for me uh do you have any do you have any advice for me on how to i guess um I know you don't want to give me advice about how to get uh, angry white people on board with what I'm doing because you fundamentally disagree with it. But any advice, I guess, for... Um... Are, okay, are you so against my overall goals that you're against even me wanting to do advocacy? Hold on one second. For... I don't have any problem with what you're doing. Right, it, you do this, you. Okay. And um, Great, so do you have any advice I... overall then? I would say the the I don't in a way need to give you this advice because I I think if you are to succeed it will be through this kind of dialogue and okay. you wanted to do this I mean from what I understand from Ethan you wanted to talk to me I did and so that that's great it's a pleasant surprise <laughs> it's a sh pleasant shock so I think that is a good move and that's a much more serious move than people who only want to demonize me or, or, or see me as a, you know, a monster. And so I, I think that, I think you're doing the right thing. We're all monsters. Well, that's true. I am a monster. Well, so am I. <laughs> I'm not. All right, let's. <laughs> oh, fuck out. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Let me take some college. Do you... We have people here who want to talk to both of you. We talked about who wanted to talk to who. Okay. Well, why don't we get some callers in? Now, I don't know if they'll be if they'll have the same friendly mission. We can't say for sure. No, I'm sure they won't. Uh, speak, being that I'm going to subject my, myself to your audience, Ethan, I'm going to actually grab a drink. Okay, so grab a, go ahead and grab a drink. All right. <laughs> what happened? Why are we freaking out? Uh, I can read. Let me see. There may be a... Are all the bad words, like, right now? Oh, it's just... Okay, fuck. All right. Well, damn, this is... I guess it's probably productive.